Finally, a Suunto watch I can actually fit on my wrist. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a close look at the brand new Suunto 9 Peak. I guess it's not brand new. It came out like a month ago, but it's new to me. I've been wearing the Suunto 9 Peak for about two weeks now, going on my daily runs with it, living my everyday life with it, going to the grocery store, sleeping, doing all the things, wearing the watch to find out what it's really like to live with in everyday life. And there are certain aspects about the Suunto 9 Peak that I really like and some that I don't like so much. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. To give you some background, I mainly use this watch in a running capacity. I don't do much swimming, cycling, or triathlon stuff, so that's really what I'm going to focus on in this video. However, I will glaze over all of the features of the Suunto 9 Peak to give you a well-rounded opinion on what I think about it so far. As a quick disclaimer, Suunto did not send me this watch. I bought it with my own hard-earned money for the purpose of reviewing on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe down below to help me afford more watches in the future. <laughs> oh, and also consider becoming a Patreon because that also helps me do what I'm doing here. First off, let's talk about the hardware on the Suunto 9 Peak because that's arguably the biggest upgrade to it over the previous Suunto 9. As you can see here, there is a noticeable difference from the previous design. On the left here, I've got the older Suunto 9 Barrow, and on the right here is the newer Suunto 9 Peak. And obviously, the Suunto 9 Peak is just way smaller. If we take a look at the Suunto 9 Barrow on my men's 165 millimeter circumference wrist, you can see that this thing is just a beast. <laughs> Honestly, it's just too big for me to wear. Uh, it's not comfortable on my wrist. I can't wear it to bed. So I always had issues trying to wear this thing as a daily driver watch. And if we take a look at the Suunto 9 Peak, again, on my men's 165 millimeter circumference wrist, uh, this fits me way better. And honestly, this might be like the perfect size for me. It doesn't feel too big, too small. It's really right in the middle, and I really like the form factor of this watch. The Suunto 9 Peak comes in at a 43 millimeter diameter, and it's 10.6 millimeters thick. And it comes in at just 62 grams, which again is lighter than the original Suunto 9 in Suunto 9 Barra. The Suunto 9 Peak comes in a couple of different color options and also different materials. This is the black steel version, but there is also a silver titanium version that costs a little bit more money and it's a little bit lighter on the wrist. In terms of the build quality and design of the Suunto 9 Peak, I really like it. The bezel is really solidly built. It's basically one big chunk of steel around the perimeter of the watch here. Uh, down below, you can see a little Suunto emblem. And yeah, overall, it just feels really premium in the hand. Around the back of the watch, we have a brand new optical heart rate sensor that's built into the Suunto 9 Peak along with an SpO2 sensor to pick up that blood oxygen saturation level. And there's also a new charging cradle, which kind of just pops on the back magnetically and is a lot more secure than the previous charger that came on the original Suunto 9, which was a little bit finicky to get on and off. The buttons on the Suunto 9 Peak are just really satisfying to press. Um, they actually have like an audible click to them and they feel very secure. Like when you click it, you really know you clicked it. Can you hear that? It's a very satisfying sound. <laughs> the included band that comes with this Suunto 9 Peak is an industry standard quick release band that you can pop off with your fingernail and you can put all kinds of different colors and materials on here instead. However, the included band that came with this watch is really nice. It's super stretchy so it can take up a lot of different wrist sizes and it also has these additional holes in it that allow for a lot more breathability and allow the watch to dry out a lot quicker when it gets wet. Another nuanced feature about this band is that it has a nice way of securing the uh, floppy side of the band once you secure it to your wrist. It's got this little nub, let's see if we can see that on camera, it's got this little nub uh, that you can actually just pop into one of the empty holes on the side of the watch and that way there's nothing flopping, flopping around. And I like this a lot better than having extra sliding rubber things that kind of secure it. The display on the Suunto 9 Peak is a 1.2 inch transflective display meaning that it's always on but it's not an OLED or an LCD display that's really bright and vibrant. This is really designed to be functional in direct sunlight, to be to see things at a glance while you're running.
running or you're riding a bike or swimming or whatever. Even though it's a 1.2 inch display, the overall size of the watch is still 43 millimeters. So it does have some pretty chunky bezels around the perimeter of the watch that are actually hard to notice if you're using the standard watch face. But if you change the watch face to a white background, which you can do, these bezels become very noticeable. The lens that covers up this display is actually a sapphire crystal lens, which is uh, pretty awesome because sapphire lenses are really hard to scratch. I've got experience with these on other Suntos and Garmin's, and trust me when I say they are nearly scratch proof. Nothing is scratch proof if you hit it hard enough, but these are way more scratch resistant than something like Gorilla Glass or Mineral, mineral Glass. The backlight on the Suunto 9 Peak can be set to three different brightnesses. That's between uh, low, medium, and high. Uh, the backlight brightness can get pretty bright. I find it to be a bit better than what the Suunto 9, the original, offered. I will say that the display and brightness is definitely a touch better than on the older Suunto 9. I find that it has just a little bit more brightness, a little bit more contrast, and the black seem a little bit blacker the white seem a little bit brighter. So overall, I think it's an upgrade, even though the screen itself is a little bit smaller than on the original Suunto 9. The nice thing about the Suunto 9 Peak is that the backlight is both automatic and it automatically adjusts the brightness depending on the situation. So if you're out in bright sunlight, it'll actually boost up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. If you're in a darker situation, it won't be as bright. And it's really reliable. It really turns on and off when you need it. I haven't had an issue in that department with this watch at all. The Suunto 9 Peak out of the box has this uh, watch face that shows your days of the week. And there's a little blue dot that represents when you've gotten a workout in during those days of the week, which is pretty cool. It's really nice information to just see at a glance. The user interface on the Suunto 9 Peak is nearly identical to the original Suunto 9. That means it's got a touch screen, but it also has buttons to control it if your fingers are wet or you're sweaty or whatever. The Suunto 9 Peak features three buttons. So there's a top button that goes up, a select button in the middle, and then a bottom button that will scroll down. From the watch face, if you scroll down, you'll start to go through some of your wellness data. So here I've got my heart rate information. I've got my stress level, which says I'm stressed right now. I kind of am. Swiping over from the stress level page brings you to the body resources. This is a pretty interesting metric. It basically is like Garmin's body battery, where it tries to give you a numeric value for how much energy you have left in the day. So if you're at 100% when you wake up, that'll drain down throughout the day until you get back to bed. Once you start sleeping, your resources will come back up and you've got more res resources to use the following day. Swiping down again, we've got our step count for the day. Next up, we've got our activity level for the week. So this shows that I've got an hour and a half of training in this week so far. Swiping down again, we've got our current altitude. And if we swipe over on this page, we can get our altitude graph for the past two hours and we can swipe into our barometer page that shows the air pressure for the past 12 hours. The next widget available is the sleep widget. Swiping down again, we've got my current fitness level. This is based on all of my recent activities. This is saying I've got a VO2 max of 53.4, which could be right or wrong. I haven't been lab tested, so I don't really know. If we go back up to the watch face and we click up from here instead of going down, this will bring us to our exercise menu where you can start an activity. In terms of activity profiles that are present on the Suunto 9 Peak, there are a ton to choose from. You can choose from anything from like running to cycling to hiking, trail running. And if there isn't something in here that you wanna do, you can make custom profiles in the app that will sync over to the watch itself that can be fully customizable. On top of those activities, there is a triathlon or multi-sport mode. So if you wanna do a run, bike, swim activity, you can do that with the Suunto 9 Peak. Once you start an activity on the Suunto 9 Peak, like I just did here, you can see that there are data fields available to view your current distance, your time, your heart rate data, all that's available here. And these data pages are fully customizable within the smartphone Suunto app. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit in this video. In terms of battery life in GPS activities, it's a little bit complicated on the Suunto 9 Peak. For instance, if we dive into one of our activities, right now I'm in the trail running activity options, there is a setting for battery mode. Depending on the battery mode you choose, you can either have really high accuracy and okay battery life, or you can dial it down to really bad accuracy and really amazing battery life. There are five battery modes to choose from on the Suunto 9 Peak. And the first one being performance, which will give you the best accuracy with okay battery life. So in a full charge in performance mode, you'll get up to 22 hours in a GPS activity, and that'll sample your location every one second. So you get really high accuracy. Next up, we've got endurance mode, which will sample your location every one minute. So you're really giving up quite a bit of accuracy there if you're moving fast. However, this will give you up to 56 hours in a GPS activity. Next up, we've got ultra mode, 
mode, which will give you up to 100 hours in a GPS activity, which is a really long time. However, this will only sample your location every five minutes. And finally is tour mode, which I probably would never recommend using because it only samples your location every one hour. That's a really long time. However, in tour mode, you can get up to 162 hours of GPS activity. And I guess if you're doing something like a Mount Everest climb or something, that might be a viable option. And again, in tour mode, there is no heart rate data available because it does turn off the optical heart rate sensor in favor of providing longer battery life. In terms of smartwatch features on the Suunto 9 Peak, it's a little bit limited. It basically will only display your phone's incoming notifications. So if you've got a phone call or a text message, Instagram message, email, that will be displayed on the Suunto 9 Peak. However, when it does display those messages, it is actually really nice to read through on the Suunto 9 Peak. Because of that touch screen display, it's really nice to scroll through text on it and it's pretty responsive. However, it doesn't have things like music controls or calendar integration or anything like that. It's purely just a way to read your phone's notifications. Okay, let's talk about the companion app that you'll need to download on your phone in order to use your Suunto 9 Peak and that is the Suunto app. From the homepage of the app, you get some pertinent information. You have get your progress for the week. This is your training load and training status. This will tell you if you're maintaining, detraining, recovering, all that kind of information. Next up, we've got the last seven days of activity. We've got our body resources, which again is kind of like body battery, where it'll tell you how much energy you have left in the day. And finally, we have our sleep information from the previous night of sleep. If we dive into that data a little bit further, you've got your total sleep duration up top, your body resources, you've got your average heart rate, minimum heart rate for the day, and and quality of sleep, and it'll tell you how much deep sleep you got from the previous night. Scrolling down on this wellness data page, we've got more information about our body resources. We've got a heart rate graph for the entire day, which is pretty nice to see. And we've also got our step count and our total calories for the day. Next up, we've got the calendar tab, and this shows all of your previous activities laid out by week, month, and year. If we dive into any particular activity, you get a whole bunch of information about the activity. You've got all of your basics like duration, distance, average pace, etc. But you also get your estimated V 2 max for that activity, recovery time from that activity, and if you swipe over, there's even more information. Scrolling down, we've got our heart rate graph and heart rate zone, which I really like and we've got a pace graph along with our splits at the bottom there. The Suunto app also integrates with just about every service out there. So you've got things like Strava, Training Peaks, Commute Navigation, Moves Count, Adidas Running. I mean, there's a lot to choose from here. They really reached out and seems like they've integrated with everybody available. So if you use just about any service, you should be able to sync your information over to that service. From within the Suunto app is also where you can customize the data fields that are available when you're out on your activities. So you can see here, I've got four to choose from. Right now I've got calories, average heart rate, heart rate, and duration. And you can add and remove pages as you please. You can also swap out the data fields for all kinds of different information. There's a lot to choose from here. One thing that the app and the ecosystem as a whole with Suunto is missing is any form of web portal, so you can't see any of this information on a computer. You basically have to do it in the app. Another issue I found with the Suunto app is that you can only add one watch at a time, and I've got three Suunto watches. So if I wanna switch between my Suunto 9 Peak and my Suunto 7, uh, I'm not able to do that. I know that I'm in the minority here and not everybody has all of the Suunto watches, but if you have like one for work and then one for, you know, big mountain days that you beat up, uh, you can't use both seamlessly with the Suunto app. And basically every other manufacturer, Garmin, Koros, Polar, you can use multiple devices within the app and sync all the information there and aggregate it. So uh, that's kind of nice. And I wish that the Suunto app had that. Okay, next up, I want to talk about the course builder that's built into the Suunto app because it's actually really powerful in probably one of my favorite features about this app. And while talking about the app, we'll also talk about the navigation features that are on board the Suunto 9 Peak. So within the app, if you go to this little GPS icon, you can see there's a map. And on this map, you can go ahead and click the little plus button and say create route. And I'm in a little trail network here. So I'll say, I wanna start my run here. I'll put point A and then I'm gonna put point B way down here. And you can see that the app automatically routed me to point B using the trail network. And after you've designed your course, you can go ahead and add course markers by just holding an area of the course. And you can make these anything you want. You could say it's for sleeping, for camping, for big game where your car is parked. And at the bottom, it'll give you stats for your run. Now that I'm done designing my course, I'll just give it a name, I'll call it test. Okay, now that we've created our route on the Suunto app and synced it with our watch, you can see here that it's available in the navigation menu. If I click on the route, we can see our little test route that I made. I can click that. Now I could say navigate. 
And here we've got a little breadcrumb map showing where I am in relation to that course. I'm not actually on the course, but if I was, you would see a line indicating where the course was and the waypoints that I added in the app. And when it comes to routes, there's another underlying feature with the Sunto 9 Peak that's not immediately apparent, and that's the snap to route feature. Essentially, if you create a route in the smartphone app, sync it to your watch, and then you go and execute that route, you can have your GPS data snap to the route instead of actually using the GPS built into the watch. Why would you want to do this? Well, if you're running like a road marathon or something like that, this could actually make your GPS data way more accurate because it'll snap right to the road instead of wandering all over the place depending on how good your GPS signal is. Again, this will only work if you're following a route, so you have to know where you're going ahead of time. It doesn't work like in a regular GPS activity when you just go for a run and go wherever. You have to intently know where you're going, plan for it, design a course for it, sync it with the watch, and then execute that course. But in some situations, I could see this snap to route feature being pretty cool. So that's a nice bonus on the Sunto 9 Peak. Another couple of upgrades I've noticed about the Sunto 9 Peak compared to the older Sunto 9. Uh, these are really nuanced, but you might want to know about them. First of all, you can turn off the Sunto 9 Peak. There is an off button in the menu. You can power it down and put it on a shelf and pick it up later. On the Sunto 9, you can't turn it off. This thing just stays on forever. Another nuance upgrade to the Sunto 9 Peak over the Sunto 9 Barrow is that you can actually upgrade the firmware over the air, which is a really big deal. Previously on the Sunto 9 Barrow, you needed to plug it in over USB to your, to your computer and then download the Sunto application to upgrade the firmware. You don't have to do that anymore with the Sunto 9 Peak. It just happens by itself on your smartphone. Welcome to 2021, Sunto. Well done. Okay, let's talk about GPS accuracy on the Sunto 9 Peak. Generally speaking, I think it's doing a pretty good job. I've been out on several runs, varying from trail running with really bad cloud cover to road running. And in most cases, the Sunto 9 Peaks lined up pretty well with my Garmin 400 945 LTE, my Garmin Phoenix 6S, and my iPhone 12 Pro. For the most part, there are no major complaints with the Sunto 9 Peak. I will say in some cases, the Sunto 9 Peak took a little bit longer to get a GPS fix before my run than my other test devices, but only by a few seconds. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite thing, heart rate accuracy. How good is the optical heart rate sensor on the back of the Sunto 9 Peak? To test the heart rate accuracy, I went out on several runs wearing the Sunto 9 Peak on one wrist, the Garmin 400 945 LTE on my other wrist, and a Polar H9 ECG strap around my chest. The Polar H9 being super accurate becomes the baseline. For the most part, the trend lines were almost identical between all three devices. However, there were a couple of spikes in some areas on the Sunto 9 Peak that weren't present on the Garmin 400 945 LTE or the Polar H9 chest strap. But all in all, I think it was pretty acceptable. It wasn't perfect, but it did a pretty decent job. And on the topic of heart rate, I also tested the SpO2 sensor that's on the Sunto 9 Peak against a fingertip SpO2 sensor, which is generally more accurate. And again, it did a pretty decent job. Both the fingertip sensor and the Sunto 9 Peak reported about 97 and 98% in terms of blood oxygen saturation. And I think that's accurate. I don't have any more scientific way to test it, but it looks good so far. Okay, final topic about the Sunto 9 Peak, and that is price and value. The Sunto 9 Peak in the steel version that I have here comes in at $569. That is not cheap. And if you upgrade to the titanium version, it comes in at $699, even not cheaper. The Sunto 9 Peak does have a really nice rugged build quality. It feels like you could take a bullet. That sapphire glass looks really durable and hasn't scratched yet. Um, I really like the overall build quality and how the watch feels. And in terms of features, the Sunto 9 Peak has just about all of the bases covered. You've got triathlon mode on there, you've got tons of activity profiles, you've got the SpO2 sensor, you've got a good heart rate sensor, good GPS accuracy. But when it comes to battery life, it is lacking a little bit, only getting about seven days as a smartwatch or only about 22 hours in usable GPS mode in that performance mode. But when you take a step back and look at the landscape, the competition is pretty fierce in this price range. For instance, if we look at the Coros Apex Pro, that comes in at 500 bucks and has just about all the same features as the Sunto 9 Peak. It even has a titanium bezel, sapphire glass lens, and a really rugged build quality. And on top of that, the Coros Apex Pro has way longer battery life than the Sunto 9 Peak. That's not to say it's way better for less money, it just has a lot of similar features for less money. So at the end of the day, the Sunto 9 Peak is a really nice watch with a ton of great features, and 
I personally really like it. I wouldn't mind wearing this watch as a daily driver. That said, I do wish Cinto pushed the boundaries a little bit more in terms of innovation and doing something new. Because really, the Cinto 9 Peak is basically just a repackaged Cinto 9, and this watch came out several years ago. All in all though, if you're a fan of Cinto watches and you're in the market for a new Cinto, this is probably at the top of your very short list, and that's for a good reason. And that's why I wanna hear from you. Down in the comment section down below, let me know if you're interested in the Cinto 9 Peak, and if you are, why? Why do you wanna pick this thing up? And if you're not buying it, let me know that as well in the comments down below. And of course, as always, if you found this video helpful, or dumb, or fun, or stupid, any of those things, consider hitting the thumbs up button down below and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. And again, if you are interested in picking up the Suunto 9 Peak, I will have a link in the description down below that does help support this silly YouTube channel, what I do here, and I would appreciate it if you use it. That's all I've got for today about the Suunto 9 Peak and what I think about it so far. I kind of dig it, and I think I'm done now. Yeah, I'm done now. I'll see you next time. Bye.